When it comes to the silly series on the official Thomas channel, I find them very fascinating. Like, how can you tell me that Thomas's Aussie adventure isn't a masterpiece? You're lying if you say no. <sighs> Screw it, this video is gonna suck. Wait! Oh no! That's right! And guess who's back? I don't wanna- The ultimate life form has returned from his daring adventure. After two years in training with my clan of Toby Bob the Builder Minis, I headed towards the treacherous lair of the dastardly Peachan for the battle that defines all battles on Earth. And I lost. But that's not the point. I wrote my autobiography about my escapades, being a bestseller, of course. I retired shortly after to focus on my new successor being John, to face once again that wicked Peachan, to bring justice to my empire before he evades mine, as written in the prophecy about it. Hey, uh, nice story, but this is just about DC superhero minis. Oh. I was gonna scrap it, but like, we can make the video if you want. Yes! At San Diego Comic Con 2015, a special collab and partnership with DC and Thomas and Friends Minis of all things was unveiled as a Super Friends Minis mashup, which was packaged as if it were a comic book, which when opened, actually as a full-on comic strip, the characters are displayed alongside, revealing five of these new mini characters, being Thomas as Superman, Diesel as Batman, Spencer as Cyborg, Millie as Harley Quinn, and Diesel 10 as the Joker. Each are displayed and get their own little light show too, which is pretty neat. This set came with a comic on it, and the story is pretty interesting. Thomas sees a DVD advertisement for DC Super Friends and thinks how exciting their lives must be. He goes to sleep, and this thing crashes on Sodor. Somehow, it's gotten into their coal and fuel, and when they go to fill up for the day, Spencer finds out he feels strong and robotic. Thomas can fly, and Diesel just feels heroic. Diesel kinda got the lame end of it. They go to the paint shop to look like their favorite heroes, but they aren't the only ones who got affected with this weird rock. Diesel 10 and Millie got new paint jobs and they're going to cause clown fusion and delay. They're going to paint the town red and green, but Thomas, Spencer, and Diesel stop them. It's a weird comic and a weird product to do. God, it was just a one-time thing. Wait, they did it twice? Returning to San Diego Comic Con 2016, the partnership with DC and Thomas and Friends Minis continued with its second release as Super Friends Minis. The box is shown to open with flaps which inside reveal the case housing these Mega Minis. There's a feature which when tilting the box has the engines flip over from their normal identities to their hero disguises. There's a small comic strip which tells both the stories of Thomas and Diesel as Superman and Batman respectively. Thomas dreams about being Clark Kent. Emily tells him that there is chaos in Town Square. It's Brainiac! He switches into his costume and uses his x-ray vision to find Brainiac. For Diesel, he dreams about being Bruce Wayne. They reveal a statue of Batman, but it's been vandalized with question marks. He turns into Batman and goes to the Mr. Bubbles Fuzzle Emporium and puts the Riddler away in jail. One interesting thing about the comics is the art style used to tell the stories, which is really cursed actually. I like that they kept the minis basis to tell these stories, which makes it more fitting to pair with these toys, and it seems they really took advantage of it, as it's very, well, wacky and silly looking, especially when it came to the characters' expressions. Looking at Emily specifically, and let's not forget about what they did to my boy Spencer. Yikes. The comics were a very interesting part of this whole collaboration, but this isn't even close to the only piece of media we got. They ended up making- <laughs> comic strips would actually be adapted and be animated. And by that, I mean moving PNGs with the voiceover just slapped on top. One thing I do appreciate is the fact that they did get the cast to voice as their respective roles for these shorts. I do also find it fun how they play around with the characters using their superhero personalities, such as Diesel doing his Batman impression or Diesel 10 attempting a Joker laugh. One interesting thing I noticed was also the inclusion of different characters who hadn't been made in the range yet, such as Ryan, Annie, and Clarabelle at the time of the Ranger's existence. The series is a superior version of these stories. They have more time to explain stuff, and what I like about the series is how they give you a moment on Sodor before all the superhero things happen. They also add in dialogue to help with the flow of the story. Some interesting additions have to be Diesel 10 and Millie painting the town not just red and green, but yellow as well, and Diesel having to deal with this guy who tries to get him to get all this stuff for him to just scream. They did a lot with these adaptations, and surprisingly, the first comics adaptation released before the comic itself, which is kind of funny. Really, my only complaint I have with these adaptations is the comic being used here. In the comic, this comic on Diesel's face was a DC Super Friends with Batman on the cover, but in the adaptation, it just has the engines there. 
it's really weird. Is this some sort of like meta thing to say that the engine's comic book has already been made and then they get inspired by the version of them that was inspired by the DC Super Friends version? I mean, probably not, but it's really weird. Oh, I also hate how they remove the DVD advertisement for a more fitting billboard. Like, why, why would you do that? It's so freaking funny. Weirdly enough, after this, the Thomas Creator Collective made a video advertising the DC Super Friends Thomas thing too. Oh, how I wonder how it would feel to be Batman. And to an extent, I guess Superman too. The TCC made a really good episode. We see Batman in his prime, and then Clark Kent shows up, and when Bruce Wayne is about to get kidnapped, Clark hits a guy into the air and saves Batman. Batman ends up getting jealous because everything he can do, Superman can do it faster and better than he ever could. After we see Superman save Millie, we get this nice parody of the Fortress of Solitude, and it's just a freezer with vegetables. Oh hey, Paxton's there. Shouldn't he be with Batman right now? It's probably just a visual gag. Stay safe, Percy. Hmm? Percy, is that you? Oh shoot! <laughs> Did you just freaking kidnap Superman? Batman is looking on the computer and doesn't see Superman. He goes off to do his own thing and finds Superman being held by this green rope, which I'm guessing is supposed to be like a kryptonite rope with kryptonite underneath him, but before they can do that, Batman saves Superman, and we find out Paxton is Lex Luthor, so it was an actual plot point of him being in the freezer. That's kind of cool. Batman saves Superman, and it ends with Lex Luthor going to jail and the Joker laughing in prison, possibly as a sequel bait. Oh yeah, and it was also all a dream. This is by far the best story to come out of this collaboration for sure, but that is all the series. It's very interesting and particularly really strange at times, but it was really fun. And now it's time to talk about the, the toys! Following the release of the San Diego Comic Con 2015 Super Friends minis, that fall would bring a variety of brand new minis characters, all following up with a DC mashup. These, unlike most minis, were sold as character packs and not in the traditional blind bags most other minis were released in. Let's talk about the Steam Team first. Thomas, of course, does have a Superman minis, but he also has had the Bizarro version and other character variants, like the OG Batman as well as the 52 Batman. Edward has some interesting picks, such as being The Rock's Black Adam I love this guy. and Arctic Batman. Henry was given Green Arrow, which character-wise doesn't fit at all, and Batman Beyond. Gordon, funnily enough, got to be Darkseid, and also Azrael Batman. James fittingly got to be the Flash, and was given Brainiac and Krypton Armor Superman. Percy did get to fittingly also get Robin, he also got Reverse Flash as well as Red Tornado. Now Toby is a really interesting one. For some reason, Fisher Price decided to give Bro both Nightwing and Blue Beetle of all characters. They should have given him someone like Alfred, not Nightwing. And Emily, she got to be Wonder Woman, Poison Ivy, and uh, Vixen? Fisher Price really seemed to have picked some very obscure characters for this range. Some standouts from other characters would include Diesel 10 as Deadshot, Salty as Clark Kent, Gator fittingly got Killer Croc, he was also Swamp Thing, the troublesome truck was Scarecrow, Ferdinand was Martian Manhunter, Scruff is Armor Batman, they really gave Batman to anyone but me? Poop. Well said. The character packs weren't the only things that were available in this collaboration, but there was also a carrying case which included Gator as Green Lantern and Steven as Sinestro? Yeah, this range was so random. There was also a Batcave set, which was just a repaint of an already existing Minis playset of course, including Thomas's Batman as well as a Bill Clayface. One really interesting thing we noted was that both the twins coincidentally were characters that can both shapeshift as Ben being Plastic Man and Bill of course being Clayface. We're not sure if this was intentional, but if it was then it was very clever by Fisher Price's part, keeping both of them consistent, guessing they had some fanboys in their designer team. Of course, this wasn't the only collabs Minis has been involved with, as many more exist, such as the infamous Spongebob range, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the cancelled AFL assortment range, which did also bring out many, many cursed variants. Honestly, the line in general was cursed, I'm not gonna lie. So that was the entire DC Thomas collaboration. Stone, what did you think of it? Honestly, it needed more Batman. I don't think Fisher Price put enough Batman. Also, I honestly would have wondered what other characters could have been made 
if the collab lasted longer, such as the newly introduced Duck, Nia, and many more. It would have been interesting to see... Wait, wait, do you, do you hear that? My army, rise up! Our legendary battle begins now! Wait... Where's P-Chan? Why are they getting faster? Who's there? Stone! Stone! Ah!